Art usually starts with a sketch. Then you take those lines, you block in colors, and you pull the entire image together with light and details. But if you took that sketch and you broke it up into a bunch of pieces and handed each of those pieces to a different artist, how unified do you think the final result would look when they all came back together? Welcome to episode seven of the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 concept art challenges for you to tackle. Today we're studying game objects in context. So when we're designing, we're sitting in Photoshop on a blank canvas, we have to think about the surroundings that our objects are eventually gonna be placed in. It's gonna be experienced by the viewer as a whole unbroken thing. And that's what we're gonna focus on this video. Today's brief is to describe a game object using purely relative language. So to give an example, I'm from Seattle. Let me describe the Space Needle in two different ways. One would be to say the Space Needle is tall. Another way would be to say that the Space Needle is more futuristic than the rest of the skyline. Now, if you've ever been to Seattle, you know that the Space Needle stands out because it's so stylistically different from the other buildings. Now, yeah, it also is tall, but that's not really what makes it noteworthy. The key distinction here is that the description I'm using compares it to other things it relates to. So to demonstrate how our assignment works, I'm going to study the tower from Heroes of the Storm. Now, if you've never played Heroes of the Storm, it's an example of a MOBA genre. They're these multiplayer, top-down strategy games, but for our purposes, the thing to know is that the playfield is highly structured, symmetrical, and it's designed for competitive play. There's a red side and a blue side. It's almost like a chessboard or a theme park. The art is symbolic. It's not realistic. It doesn't matter that the characters are as tall as the houses, and no one really cares why there's two identical warring cities built so close to each other. And MOBA games are chaotic. The screen is always busy. The object that I'm studying, the tower, functions like a defensive turret. If an enemy gets close, the tower shoots them. So let me describe this object using relative language. I could say that the tower colors are higher contrast than the ground surface. And on that note, I could also say that the tower is more highly detailed than the surrounding ground surface. I could say that the towers are taller than these barrier buildings, and there's a lot of the barrier buildings. On that note, the towers are taller than the player characters. And this really matters when we look at a clip like this one. There's often a big battle centering around this front line. This is the defensive line of a castle. You got a bunch of characters all mixing it up here by this wall, but all the attackers are watching out for the tower. The tower is very dangerous. So no matter how chaotic this battle happens to be, the fact that the tower is tall, taller than all the players, means that you can keep an eye on it and strategize accordingly. Now on the subject of height, I could also say that the tower is less grand than the Nexus. These two buildings both belong to a set of, I guess we could call them active structures. Every team has a health station, some towers, a few bases, and a nexus. And this collection forms a big role in the game's strategy. So it makes sense that when these elements were designed, they were designed as a coordinated set. Our tower here is less grand than the two superior buildings. It's less grand than the base, and it's less grand than the nexus. And height is this classic way of establishing hierarchy, uh, establishing order of importance. Now watching this gameplay here, we can also see that the tower is more active than its surroundings. And when we're looking at the blank canvas in Photoshop, and we're starting to sketch, it's really easy to think of these objects as static, frozen in time. But animation plays a huge part in the way that we understand our surroundings. In the case of this tower, the animation doesn't really surprise or shock us, it's pretty straightforward. But the contrast matters. Most of these buildings are stationary. But the tower, well, it's animated, so it grabs our attention. Another descriptor is that the tower and the other active buildings share a team color. The health station, tower, base, and nexus, as I mentioned, they're all strategically important, but we can easily identify them by this blue team color. These buildings could have stood out from their surroundings by simply being more colorful, and that would achieve one result. They'd attract more attention. But by sharing a specific color palette, it immediately communicates they have a shared purpose and a unity. I could also say that that tower team color is less vibrant 
than the interface team color. And I think it's not an accident that the user interface has a more vibrant blue. In fact, it's the most vibrant color on this entire team. And that makes it stand out prominently from the background. Which brings us back to visual hierarchy. If we were to be overly simplistic, we could describe the game board as kind of generally earth tones, and then we have these small areas of medium saturation team colors, and then floating over the top of the screen are these even smaller areas of extremely vibrant user interface. And the artist making this game would know that these elements would all share a chaotic screen. So I think what the developers did was they reserved bands of the saturation spectrum for specific purposes. Now, in the heat of the moment, a player is not going to be thinking actively about this. But what it means is that they won't be able to miss the health bars because the health bars have been designed to share a unique color that is nowhere else on the field. They're the highest contrast, they're the most vibrant elements on the screen. Which brings us back to our tower. They use a team color blue that makes all the towers match, but it falls intentionally lower on this range of the spectrum. Now I'll stop my demo here, but hopefully you're starting to see a pattern. The tower from Heroes of the Storm might have been designed on a white canvas in Photoshop in isolation, but it will always be seen as a part of a game. Choosing something like the color on the tower or the amount of texture contrast on the tower can't happen arbitrarily. It belongs to a team. It belongs to a collection. It might be more important than these buildings and less important than this health bar. So when you're making your own designs, every time you're choosing something as deceptively simple as, you know, which color to use on a shirt, all of these factors should play a role in that decision. For your homework, pick an object from one of your favorite games, something that you know in and out. And I challenge you to describe that object in detail using only relative language. I think by taking your time with this, you're going to start to see visual choices in an entirely different light. So take your time, have fun, and when you're finished, I'll see you in the next challenge.